I'm Anne Emery. You're watching DataViz on the go, the series where you learn DataViz time savers inside everyday software like Excel. Greetings from New Orleans. I'm here to teach a half day workshop tomorrow for peak grant making. So hello from my hotel room in the French Quarter. I had some time before dinner, so I thought, why not make you a YouTube video? And this video and the next one are from questions from Chelsea Reuter. And Chelsea wrote to me on LinkedIn and said, I was watching one of your videos on dashboards. You mentioned you made other videos on helper cells. I tried searching your blogs and on YouTube, can't find any. Do you have a specific video that shows how to use helper cells when graphing? And then she said, I'm interested in this because I want my pivots to list months in a specific order, not alphabetical. I think I need a helper cell to do this. Okay, so I this is actually kind of a, a two-parter, I think. In this video, I'm going to show you what helper cells are with three examples. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to resort the months so that they go in the regular order, January, February, March, and not in some weird alphabetical order that your pivot table might do by accident, which um, spoiler alert, you don't need helper cells for that. You need a different technique. So this video helpers in case you're new to that technique. Next video, resorting months in pivot tables. Okay, so what are helper cells? It goes like this. A lot of times you're gonna have your regular table or cells, and then you need this intermediate helper table, helper table or helper cells that feed into the graph that you really want. Okay, this is the intermediate step where you have to twist things around a little bit to get the custom advanced graph that you really want. So here's a population pyramid example where if you want to build a population pyramid, which looks like this, right? It's like a histogram and another histogram so you can compare the distributions of two different groups. Your regular old table would look something like this. Maybe you have age ranges, the number of people in each of those groups, super standard. If you highlight this regular table and you go to insert, first of all, you're not gonna find a population pyramid. It's a non-native chart. That doesn't mean it's not possible. You just need helper cells, intermediate steps to do it. So, you know, if you try, if you're like, oh, this is similar, this is kind of a population pyramid, not really, that's a clustered bar chart. Or you might see this one and you're like, that's kind of, kind of getting closer. Is that, no, that's not what I need. It's like, it's not in there, right? So these are not going to be the graphs you want because they both go in the same direction. Population pyramids are like back-to-back -back charts or butterflied out. So the helper table would look like this. You would need helper cells on the left, helper cells on the right, and helper cells down the middle. This looks a little bizarre at first, so stick with me, okay? If you highlight this whole table with the helpers, this is really hard to highlight one-handed actually, um, and then you go to insert and then you pick out your chart. I like to use this one, the stacked bar chart, 100% stacked bar chart. And it gives you, you know, something that looks like this. And you're like, that. and that's not what I, why would I want that? I want a population pyramid. Well, once you format it, it would look like this. Okay, this is the population pyramid we really want. Which again, it's not possible without the helper cells because it's it's not up here. Like you can look all day, you find a regular histogram, but that, that's, not, that's not right at all. <laughs> that's totally wrong. Um, so let me just show you briefly how you go from unformatted to formatted, okay? In the formatted version, the helper cells are there, but they're invisible. Here are the middle helper cells, invisible. Here are the right helper cells, once again, invisible, okay? The invisible bars kind of nudge the ones over that you really want. They're also called floating bars or bumper cells. Those would all be synonyms. These are the helpers, see? The left helper bumps the real data over. The middle helper makes space for the age range labels to be aligned down the center. Here's the real data. Here is the right 
helper. I've got other blog posts about population pyramids in particular, so I'll link to them down below this video in case you want to go through this type of tutorial much, much slower. This is like the super fast version, just trying to show you helper cells have a purpose in making non-native charts. Okay, the second way that helper cells can help, this one's like, I'd kind of call this a helper cell, not really, um, would be regular old data cleaning and recoding. So let's say you have a data set with ID numbers and ages, and if you'd want to even make a population pyramid, you'd have to have helper cells, whoops, you'd have to have helper cells here converting the ages into age ranges. That's the intermediate step. And again, this is like sort of a helper cell, helper table situation. I would just call this like regular old data cleaning, regular old recoding, regular old recategor recategorizing. But I guess it does fall kind of under the helper cell umbrella in the sense that it's an intermediate step to get the graph you really want. Okay, if you're new to these types of conversions, I just want you to know that there are a couple different ways to do this. You might use if statements, nested ifs, which are if statements inside if statements. Uh, these get really long. Look how long this is. I, I don't like using nested ifs when there's that many different scenarios to recode or recategorize, but you'll get the same answer at the end. Like the one-year-old will correctly turn into the zero to nine age range. Or if you don't like to write really, really long, confusing nested ifs, like I told you I don't, you could also use something like a lookup, a V lookup, or an X lookup, or an index match with, here's another helper table, AKA lookup table. You would look up this age over here, and then return the age range over here. If you have questions about if, lookups, lookup tables, comment below the video, let me know because I've got tons of blog posts and online courses all about those techniques, okay? But the big picture for this video is that this is sort of an example of a helper table or a helper cell. Okay, one final example of helper tables and why they matter, again, Big picture here is they're the intermediate step that give you the graph or the map that we really want as the end result. So let's say you've got a data set with people's ID numbers and you know what country they're from. And then, I don't know, this is a made up value, made up example. So we've just got like, I made these up with rand between. Okay, so whatever you're studying in your project. And if we wanna summarize this to turn it into a map, and know like how many total things from Switzerland, how many total things from France, et cetera, well then we'd need a pivot table or a sum ifs. I'll just use a pivot table for now since I'm doing this one-handed. It's really hard to write sum ifs one-handed. Really, really hard, hard enough to do a pivot table one-handed. Okay, so let's say you have a pivot table to summarize your data set, right? Like super normal data analysis process. Uh, we'll put country here, values summed up over here. Okay, and then let's say you wanna map this. So, you know, you click on your pivot table and you go to add, like if you wanna just add a bar chart or a column chart, super easy, right? Like all these charts are very standard pivot tables to pivot charts, easy, 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 easy. But let's say you wanna map, uh, you can't. Excel gets very angry and it says, uh-uh-uh, you, you can't do that. Pivot tables don't link to maps. I have no idea why. If I could wave my magic wand and fix this at Microsoft, I would. I would just make pivot tables seamlessly flow into maps. It doesn't mean you can't make a map. It just means you need a helper table. You need an intermediate step. And the intermediate step would be uh, just something like you take the values you have copy them, and then we'll just put them down here as values, and let's label these so that our map works, because sometimes maps don't work unless they're not labeled. Okay, and then we can insert a map, okay? 
Pivot tables don't go directly to maps, but pivot tables can go to helper tables and then to maps. Sometimes I just do a regular copy paste. Um, usually in real life, I usually do a lookup so that they're linked very seamlessly so that in case the data set changes, so does the helper table thanks to a lookup. Anyway, those are details for the advanced users of this type of tutorial. If you have more questions about helper cells, helper tables, helper columns, what those might be used for, you know the drill. Comment below the video and I will certainly help you out. Thank you so much.